What I'm about to tell you next may surprise a lot of you when it comes to web accessibility and adhering to the European Accessibility Act, especially from June 2025. A lot of you don't actually have to follow it. Let me be clear. Web accessibility is something you should be doing out of good practice. And I do recommend you do implement a lot of the tips I'm going to mention and talk about. Because if you don't, you're kind of negating a chunk of the market, audience, clients, users, visitors, potential customers. And I think it's a good thing to not exclude people. However, you are going to see a lot of videos and people and you're probably going to get contacted via your email with loads of accessibility experts saying, I've gone to your website, your URL, I've scored it and you're just not hitting the mark and you're going to get hit by a fine or imprisonment or something like that and you will be responsible. And then your clients may get an email and then they're going to go, well, you're the web designer and the developer. Why did you not adhere to this law? Because if anything happens, I'm going to take you down with me. Yeah, I know. Worst case scenario. But let me be really upfront about this. I am not asking or I'm not telling you now to not adhere to the Web Accessibility European Act or even the US law, okay? You do you and what you want to do. But I want to make clear that some people, you've got to do it no matter what. But there's a lot of you that won't have to do it. You will be exempt. Let me clarify. The European Accessibility Act includes specific exemptions for certain private companies. Now, if you're a public company or a public department, you do have to follow it. You can't get away with it. So if you're a government organization, a local council, you know, health provider kind of thing, you're going to have to adhere to the European Act. But if you're a private company, and you can show that complying with the European Accessibility Act is going to impose a disproportionate burden or require a fundamental alteration of the product, the service, or something about your company, then you may be exempt. However, this is evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis, and businesses are going to have to prove or provide justification for any claims you make. The second exemption for private companies, and by the way, we are private companies, right? Businesses, freelancers, web designers, graphic designers. In the context of the European Accessibility Act, a micro-enterprise micro -enterprise is exempt from the Act. So how do we define a micro enterprise? There are three ways to describe it and you must satisfy two of them. OK, so just because you satisfy one isn't going to be enough. You must satisfy at least two of the three things I'm about to tell you about micro enterprises. The first one is do you employ fewer than 10 people? If you're a freelancer, sole proprietor, web designer, graphic designer, AI expert, content creator, whatever, you probably do satisfy that rule you employ fewer than 10 people. What about your annual turnover? It must not exceed 2 million euros. You're going to have to do the conversion to your currency. But if you earn over 2 million euros, you will not satisfy the rule. The third one is that your annual balance sheet, so that's like your assets, your income and all of that, must also not exceed 2 million euro. So let me clarify, okay? You may be earning, say, one and a half million euro and you might go, cool, we're under two million. But if you own like a massive building and cars and equipment and I don't know, whatever else you do. And these are your assets that are part of your business. Your income plus your assets might take you over the two million euro. So here are the three things that I've now told you. You must satisfy two of them as a micro enterprise. So do you satisfy those rules? And this is where you do have to think very, very carefully because there's going to be web designers out there that go, yep, yeah, I satisfy all three of them, not just two, all three of them, I'm okay. Well, what about the client you built a website for? So you as a web designer or a freelancer or a web agency, you might satisfy all of those rules. Okay, so you're okay for your websites and what you put out there in your stores or what digital products you produce. But if you build a website for a furniture store and they do employ more than 10, or maybe they are exceeding 2 million euro, again, do the conversion to the currency they're dealing with or what they put on their finance books. If they are, then you as a web designer have to ensure that their website is compliant to the European Accessibility Act. 
Again, this is a mistake people might make. You might go, well, I built 20 websites. You may need to go back to them or you may need to contact and double check with your clients. Can you just confirm that you meet at least two of these? If not, we're going to have to go back and revisit your website and you can charge for that. Okay, you're not just going to go and fix it for free. It's kind of not entirely your fault that the law has changed and all of that. And now this is coming out in June 2025. So go back and check with your clients. But I just want to let you know that, you know, if your clients and you satisfy two of the three rules here, your website does not have to adhere to the rules. However, I don't feel like you should completely ignore them either, because I know some people are going to stick it in the comments and go, that's really bad advice. Well, no, I'm just clarifying something that I have found a lot of people are not making very clear. We hear all about it. And that's justified. I understand. But if there is an exemption, I feel like that needs to be made crystal clear as well.